Got my boy Brett Weiss here from Nexa Mortgage, coming all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Right? How yes, you doing, sir. man? Good, good, buddy. Thanks for having. How me. you liking Philly so far? Oh, it's great. Yeah. 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 You know, it's a nice little break. Get out of get out of town. Yeah, Reading just... Terminal, right? You went to got some food, right? Absolutely. Yeah, a couple blocks from the hotel, and uh, yeah, kind of like a foodie wonderland over there. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Brought your wife, Carmen. Yes. She's yep. in studio. Yes, she is here with us. My accountability. Manager. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, accountability coach. Yeah, she wakes you up, beat your ass, right? <laughs> right yeah. Get you going in the morning, right? Right. Every day. So, uh, so Nexa, right? You're a branch manager at Nexa. Yes, sir. Right. So we've had we've had some owners in, um, but you're actually a part of a, a larger brokerage, right? And who are the owners again? Absolutely, uh, Mike Cordes and Matt Grella. Okay. I call them M squared. M squared. I like yeah. that. Mike and Matt. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, you know we're we have over 300 LOs. Um, oh, nice. I think we eclipse C2, which is the number one and number, or not eclipse C2, excuse me, number two, just two, two C2. Two C2. Yeah. Okay. A lot of twos uh, there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so large brokerage, certainly uh, as to what may. Yeah, not to dive in, but C2, is that the largest brokerage? I believe so. Yeah. And then you have Nexa. And Nexa. Yeah. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Year over year, that. about a year ago, we had 30 LOs. Now we have over 300. Wow. Yeah, so it was like 10 times growth in just a year's time. Are you helping recruit as well? I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Next is rather unique in the fact we have a revenue share program. Okay. Which encourages LOs to go out and not only just like, hey, I work at a great place, but they have a little skin in the game yeah. and actually make That's cool. kind of like an override. Yeah, I want to dive into that a bit later. Sure. Um, but uh, right now I want to learn just about you. Sure. All right. Um, so you are you're coming from Phoenix, right? But I want to learn about how you got into this into this uh, industry, right? You have to be a little bit of a lunatic to be this in the industry, is. right? Yeah. <laughs> so can you take me all the way back to the beginning of of sure. why you got in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I was uh, kind of any doing sales jobs, nothing great, right? Door to door, direct TV in Phoenix. Yeah, we had uh, a guy on yesterday. He sold meat. Yeah. And then he transi- transitioned right. right in. Sure. So, okay, so you're a bunch of different sales jobs. Yeah, right? stupid, silly ones. I mean, picture 115 degrees going door-to-door trying Ooh. to sell uh, d- direct TV. Yep. You know, not really a wise <laughs> Right, right, I got you. I was and just by chance, dumb luck. A friend of a friend uh, in the business said, hey, you'd be great at this. Come on in. Um, I had absolutely zero experience. Um, at that time, they're doing a lot of uh, FHA streamlines. Right. Super easy loan to learn what, on. What year was this? 2003. I'm sorry. 2003. Okay. Yeah. So 2003 is so when you kind of got in. The right? fall of 2003. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think it was 25. FHA long streamlines, time, bunch of refis, ago. just just getting them in, throwing them against the wall, and go, go, Absolutely, go. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I think that brokerage actually was in a, a double-wide trailer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Could you finance it? Yeah, it was a fixed. <laughs> it was a fixed. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. It was fixed, got it. Okay. No more license plate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so you got in. Um, do you remember what his name was? Do you want to mention that? Or is that just so long ago? It's just like. Yeah, yeah. No, Dax Ferguson, yeah. one of my mentors. That's cool. Absolutely. I love giving credit where it's due. No longer they in the got industry, in. but absolutely got me in. Taught me a lot of things about not just mortgages, but sales in general. Cool, cool. All right, so you started there. Where'd you go after that? I kind of want to know your whole timeline until now. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, kind of stuck in with Dax and the brokerage um, for about a year and a half. And then uh, actually then left and became branch manager, opened up my own branch okay. for a different brokerage in town. Okay. Did that for a couple, you know, I kind of exceeded things there, hit the ceiling there. Yeah. And it was time to start running my own shop. Um, so it was like 2005-ish? In Sounds that range? About right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About a year and a half, two years in. Okay. Um, which kind of came fast. Oh, yeah. You, you know? just got in the industry and right. now you're running a branch. Yeah. So um, did that for a couple local brokerages. Um, still doing mainly refis. I kind of touched on that. Yeah. As, yeah, yeah. as we get into my career, mm-hmm. um, probably 95% refi. Okay. Um, then the, uh, the crash started. You know, things yeah. were great. Uh, crash came. Um, I actually stuck it out and had three of my best years actually in um, nine, 10, 10 and 11. 11. Really? Yeah. So a uh, lot of people got out at that point. So I right. got in in 2011. So I missed 
like all that. And, sure. s- and some people say you were lucky to miss it. And, some, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I wanted to be in it then and see it. But I guess it's kind of good I got in, didn't have any of those, I don't want to say bad practices, but I just didn't know it, right? Right. So, sure, But sure. a lot of people got out and you stuck through it, which is a really cool story. To a degree. To a degree. To all a right, degree. let's talk about that. Okay. And then, uh, then uh, 2011 came um, and brokerages kind of just, they were getting out. The guys that I did my, I was working for as a, a branch manager. They were like, we're out. We're out. We're closing up. I couldn't find another brokerage. Kind of got the feeling brokering was over. Couldn't recover quite yet. The comp rules changed in 2011, right? They did. You can only get paid from Don one Frank side. Kicked in. Do you think that had something to do with it? It, it, it may be scared them there? out of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I can't put my finger on it. They were great guys. I, we got along well. They just moved on to something completely unrelated. Yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> So then we said, hey, I, I still had a year or two on my lease. Yeah, yeah right. So you <laughs> what am do gonna, something. What am I going to do with this place? Mm-hmm. So then we looked at going to retail Okay. Um, back then. And uh, it's a dirty word around here, but I'll tell you this. I opened the first retail mortgage branch mm-hmm. of Freedom Mortgage in the Western United States. Oh, wow. Um, we had been brokering a ton to Freedom. They knew who I was. So it was and, a soft landing, right? Yeah. So they even approached me, you know, and said, hey, what do you think about this? We're rolling out retail. We have a couple already in New Jersey in the eastern United States where we're kind of based out of. But we want to get into the, the southwest. Okay. And you'd be a good fit. And it was fantastic for nine months. Right. Well, the industry goes in cycles, too. For nine so months. So I know, it, yeah, for <laughs> nine months. Okay. But that that was the sexy thing back then is, is retail. Sure. You know? It, Whatever it is, like we said, the industry goes in cycles. That was the spot to go at the time for Absolutely. nine months. Yeah. In <laughs> 2011. Okay. Then they pulled so the rug out from under us, Ooh. and our rates were just atrocious. Okay. Um, and being solely refi, you're dependent on that rate. Right. You know, this isn't purchase. Mm-hmm. So it, it just killed us. Um, I kind of saw it coming. We stuck with it a few extra months. Um, I then just started flipping homes on okay. the side. Um, you know, you're buying them at the foreclosure sales yeah. at the count, uh, the courthouse. So you kind of got out of the mortgage side for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing any, anything yeah. to survive, right, right? right? Survival, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing that in my, my last few months in the business, flipping homes on the side, doing really well, 30, 40,000 a flip. Yeah. And then when it came to all this BS, I was just like, you know what? The lease is up in April. I'm not renewing. That's what I was going to ask. How much I'm, more time does I'm he not have renewing. Lease? Yeah. And we're shutting it down. I told my guys, I gave them four, fair warning, 60 days in advance. These are my plans. I'm getting out of the business completely, just like my previous owners mm-hmm. had done for me. Um, and just started flipping homes full time. Okay. For for how long? Was it like a year? It was uh, for two full years. Wow. I think I did about 20 flips in the Phoenix area. Okay. And then I ended up, because of that business, not wanting to pay commissions. And st- I went and got my real estate license. Yeah. And then... Became a realtor, working with buyers and sellers, actually. Okay. So that's why I said I'm a little unique. and not like, you, you still know, have your license? No, I don't. You don't have it? It's inactive. Are you um, allowed to have it? I, I you are. You you are allowed, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are. And I may do something with that. Yeah, at some years. point. Who knows? Um, but no, at this moment, it is not. Um, I have uh, real estate brokers is begging me all the time. Yeah, come yeah. Come on, come on, come oh, on. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But um, no, my focus is this. But uh, yeah, so I've been five years as a realtor. And just got back in, in the lending a little over three years ago. Okay, so so I'm thinking, <laughs> all right, you're in the real estate game, actually doing buyers and sellers like you're like you were flipping, but then you actually went buyers the flips sellers dried up. Okay, so the margins weren't there, and, and said, that hey, market I, too, right? Hey, I got this license, mm-hmm. might as well use it and make a living, you know, in its normal capacity. Buyers, sellers, right. investors. Okay, um, absolutely hated it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't stand it. But you did what you had to do. But you're doing what you got to do, yeah. you know, and making a decent living, not loving my job, knowing it hopefully wasn't a forever thing, mm-hmm. but needed wait, wait it out till the next good thing came along. Um, and then I just, I got married. Uh, you guys have any kids? No, not, well, we have three kids. Cool. But not together. We have uh, two, uh, I have two and my wife has one. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, all girls. All girls? Yeah. yeah, I got the baby girl. I got two boys and then the two-year-old baby girl, and she runs the house, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, sounds you about know. right. <laughs> yeah, sounds we have about the four-year-old. Right. 
four year old yeah. runs it. Yeah, right, right. Um, so to, to get back, so two thousand, so that was like two thousand thirteen ish, the two thousand five, two thousand eleven, two thousand fifteen. I'm saying okay, the sixteen. Yeah, is when you were no mortgage, all no, real estate. Right, right. All right. So then, what brought you back then? In 2016, um, I had this stupid idea that if I got back <laughs> in the lending, I wouldn't have to work weekends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Remember? How's that working out for you? Yeah. Uh, working weekends? Misnomer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right. Um, no, you got to grind it out. And yeah. I, you know, um, but at least I can do it in my underwear, at home, yep. in my home office, mm-hmm. on a Saturday, on a Sunday, jump in, send my prequels, do what I got to do, not get nice dressed up. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the middle of a football game, I want to yeah. watch. And Cardinals hit, the, hit fan? the road. No, I'm Green Bay fan. Green Bay. Yeah. How'd that happen? I was born. I know and we're raised, going off. Was okay. Born and raised there. Okay. Yeah. Eagles yeah. just beat Green Bay. We're we're, we're very aware of that. <laughs> a few, re, few remote controls and things. <laughs> we just lost to Dallas, though. I know yeah. we're going off on tangent, right. but um, <laughs> so we were at so 2016, right? Now you're getting back in. Yeah. Fall of 2016. Who who was it? It wasn't it wasn't Nexa though, right? No, no, I went to retail. Went to retail. Right. Okay, went back into retail. I really at that moment didn't even know the broker channel was was existing back. or back. Okay, um, from being a realtor, I was only dealing with retail. Mm-hmm. So then when I made that transition, I contacted the retail guys that I had you know Makes done sense. business with. Um, one of them actually happens to be Mike Cordes. Okay. Who was at Nova Home Loans then, which Nova? is retail. Yeah. Um, I didn't end up going there. But uh, that's how Mike and I met, actually, is he approached me he while tried he was to recruit a lender. You. Okay. No, he wanted my he wanted referrals from me. Because oh, I was all a right. real estate agent. Okay. So that's how we got to know each other way back when. Okay. Uh, you stayed in touch and now you're here. Stayed not? in touch. So you went retail. Went retail. Okay. Um at Supreme Lending. Supreme. Supreme Lending. Uh left there. Actually went and worked with Matt, Mike, at uh, Equity Prime Mortgage. Okay. Um, Mike was branch manager there. Were you an LO at this point when you got back in? Yes, 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 yes. So you went straight to LO. You're not running a branch at this point. No. Okay. No, just straight LO. Okay. Into, you know, all by myself mm-hmm. and, you know, working in various retail branches. Okay. For a few different companies. Sure. Um, I then basically left the uh, Equity Prime Mortgage working for Mike. Okay. I think I left there three months before they opened Nexa. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I didn't like some of the things that were going on there, and they didn't either. We probably didn't have the greatest communication. Maybe we sure. stuck together yeah. from day one, but uh, it, that's not how it panned out. But I uh, went back to Supreme Lending again, uh, and then eventually, uh, about nine months later, they wanted me to open a branch for them. Retail, of course, Mm -hmm. um, in my part of town. And, I mean, to the point where they had the lease done. um, They had, uh, you know, everything. Everything was there. Everything was lined up for me. LOs were going to come from the main branch, come with me, because they lived on my side of town. It Mm -hmm. always makes sense. And I just pumped the brakes. I started talking to Mike about a month before, because they were dilly-dallying a little bit at Supreme, making it really come into motion. And I had time to stop, you know. Not smell the roses necessarily, but you know, yeah. think things through a little bit, do a little more research, that that and the other, price some scenarios with my yeah, the whole and, thing, you right. know, the whole thing. So that opened me back up to brokering, and I love brokering. You know, like I said, mm-hmm. that's where I got my start, and wish I never, you know, it, yeah. It but like we know, it's before. it's cycles, and and I think sure. what people need to know, this is what I just took from your story, which is awesome, is like it's survival. You know, no matter what industry you're in, you do what you have to do to get it done. You can't just jump into this industry and have a social media platform and have no experience and just jump in. Sure. Like you've been through it. You've seen it all. You you just do what you have to do to survive. And (laughs) and now you're probably a spot in your career, in your life where you're you're working on you're in a great spot right now, working on that work life balance, the whole thing. You have a few kids. Right. So you have figured it out. But it's not it's not easy. I think that's what we're trying to get across is industry is not easy just to oh, jump no. into. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, I saw something. Uh, Mike did an interview with Shred. At, yeah. At uh, Josh Pitts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At uh, Fuse. Frazier. Yeah. And he talked about, you know, hey, you want to get ahead and really do well. And I agree with this. He's like, you got to grind it out for at least three years. You have to. You've got to. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm. 
just passing my three three years. Yep. Um, I am backing off a little bit more of my own origination. I'm investing in people. Cool. More systems, marketing. My wife's helping more with business development. Nice. And the recruiting we talked about that yeah. Tex is really good at. And that's going to be the focus for me, the Brett Weiss team, and, and everything cool. in 2020. Well, let's dive into that a bit then. Um, they got me curious. So you're a producing branch manager right now. Yes. But you're looking to you're you're working on what your strengths are, right? Mm-hmm. And it sounds like listen, I'm I'm doing I'm producing, I'm managing people. Maybe my strengths right now are more managing people. Is that where your your head's going right now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is cool. It's the training. You know, I've I've done tons of loans. You know, yeah. and I've proven to myself over three years the things I wanted to prove to myself getting back in this industry. Yeah. You know, I think this year I'm on pace for 191 units. Whoa. 31 million or so. And I'm not in some huge market where even Scottsdale, I don't do Scottsdale loans for the most part. Yeah. I'm on the west side of town. Okay. My average loan size is like 240. Okay. You know, so when we have, you know, a, a month where I'm at three, three million, four million, it isn't on like, you know, eight loans. No, no, you're doing volume. <laughs> you're doing volume. Yeah. You're, and first, I think as, as uh, margin compression, we're seeing it already. It's probably going to continue. You're going to have to do volume. You're going to have to grind it out. Right. Right. You can't just be waiting for one or two big loans to sure. make your money. I've never been that way, no. so it won't be anything yeah, I'm going to have to adapt to. Yeah. So how many LOs do you have on your on your team right now? Uh, I just hired four last week. Four, four just in one week? In one week, yeah. How long did it take to get those guys? Um, or girls? Three or four days. Oh, three or four yeah, days. Yeah, one, one phone call, one interview. And, uh, you know, yeah, Next is doing something pretty cool with, with recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. You want to touch on that a bit? Sure. Of how that how that kind of works. Yeah, I mean it. it uh, I don't know if EXP Realty is big mm-hmm. out here. Okay, it's so starting you, you to. Know, yeah, yeah, it's very big in Phoenix, Washington, Texas, um, and basically it kind of broke off of Keller Williams that right. used to have um, profit sharing. EXP's model is revenue sharing, right? Where it's a little bit different in mm-hmm. calculation, and, and it's become very very popular. I've made them the fastest growing real estate brokerage in the world. Okay. Um, I work with them a lot at home. Okay. Um, but uh, it's a, it's kind of based on the same same premise. Uh, we just have revenue sharing that goes down three levels. Really? For anybody you bring in. So um, it's not a lot of money. It's 10 bips. But, yeah, but still. But you bring in a heavy hitter who's doing 2 million, 3 million, 4 million regularly. Yeah. Um, you know, 2 million, that's a $2,000 paycheck for just really bringing it Yeah. Up. So it's a pretty simple. It's type. very simple. Yes, because you're a branch manager. Do you, are you running a PL? Yes. So you run a PL, um, but then you also, if you bring people in, it's it's the 10 bips type situation. That's how it works. Right, right. So it's nice and simple. You don't have to worry about too, too much. It's getting people in, investing in them. and Yeah, it, really what, what for the most part, Nexa's running right now is virtually every single person is running in their own PL. Okay. Each in. Oh, the, really? I mean,. If you come and work for me, you're not. Okay, right. so I, I do a little bit different because I provide leads. I share okay. my realtor referrals. I do a lot. I do one-on-one coaching every two weeks for every single yeah, one yeah. of my LOs. So that's why they come to me. And they know they're not making as much as they could if they work for a corporate next. Just, yeah. I'm very transparent with that. And they find the value in those things that I provide. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't do that and go straight to next corporate um, or just want to be independent but you know, part of my team yeah. still. Yeah. Um, you get your own PL. Okay. And every single person runs their own PL now. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if you a, think about it, we're all little mini if you're just a regular LO, sure. You're your own mini business anyway. That's where things are going. Like everyone's got to brand themselves. You you're running your own business. Absolutely. Really. Anyway. But some people might want to have more of that that support, more leadership from you so they could just come up underneath you until they maybe break and whatever sure. whatever they do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I call it a hybrid comp plan. Yeah, that's cool. You know, then people won't, don't feel trapped. I mean, I'm old, I'm old, I was old school, you know, and I was running like the old school branch, mm-hmm. make the percentage of uh, the splits. Right, right, right. You know, and that's what Nexa did for me. When I came on board, I was hired just as an LO um, on, a, you know, the company norm split. Yeah. And I said, I really want to open a branch. I said, come on, come on as an LO. We're not going to give you a branch right away. You got to come on and average two million for three months. Mm-hmm. I did that, and then they held to their word and they gave me my branch. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, the vision of, of ownership is fantastic where, where we're at. Um, just the concept of the revenue share, how, you know, the numbers don't lie yeah. going from 30 LOs to 300 in a year's time. Yeah. You know, there's something there. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and these guys are, are wackos. They've now, they announced it at uh, Fuse. They want to go 1K in May. 1K by May, they're calling Whoa. it. Whoa. Um, 1,000 yeah. LOs. Yeah, I mean, I see it all in in in, uh, in brokers are better. The group, I mean, you see Mike up there a lot. He he's talking a lot, and I've always been curious. It just seems different. I think that's big in this industry. You kind of look at what everyone else is doing, sure, and then do the complete opposite. That's my law for marketing. It's just do it different. You got to sure. stand out in today's world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and they're certainly not shying away from yeah being different. Um, well, know, what about you though? Like, models. how are you standing out just in your market? I mean, we love Next, but I want to know, sure, let's sure. know about your spot right there. Um, you what know, are you I, doing, branding? You know, like, how, what are I you mean, doing? I'm fairly good on the social media stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm out there. Um, I should be better on YouTube. My wife wants me on TikTok. Yeah. We could, I just uh, got TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fun, yeah. but I'm still trying to figure out what to do with it. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, so working on that sort of stuff, I think what helps me stand out is, you know, the, the uniqueness of my career path a little yeah. bit. It is because, and let me say this first. Um, when I got back in to the industry three years ago, I had to completely reinvent myself yeah. because I fizzled out being a refi only guy. So I said, the longevity in this business is purchase, mm -hmm. right? Refi booms come and go. And um, I had no book of business. It wasn't like I jumped in and the agents that I did cross sales with automatically just started sending me their business. Oh, yeah. No, because they still had their go-to guy and gal. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to start from scratch. And then uh, prior to the refi boom that we unexpectedly ran into this year, I was about 90 to 93% purchase. Uh, That's impressive. That point. So it, I completely flipped it backwards. Um, now we're a little heavier, of course, mm -hmm. refi right now just because of where just we're is at. Just is what it is, right? Take, it, take what you can get. But I'm constantly preaching to not only myself but to the team, like purchases are where it's at. It's where it's always going to be. And let's not fall in love with the refi so much that we don't do our normal um, practices. Yeah, well, that's the long the longevity, like you said. Yeah. you got to think long term. If you're just transactional, one, you know, one deal at a time – not going to be sustainable sure. it's just not right yeah so if you have uh you just brought in four los right so i'm sure you're slain right now you're up here in philly you got four <laughs> new los right you got business coming in right but for the new los or like you did three years ago where would you say if are any of them new the los no or their experience no they are experience. so they come with a book yeah. of a book of business but let's talk about if it was someone newer to the business or getting back in what what do they have to do right now to, to get started yeah, I mean, that it's a tough gig to break into. It is. You know, for sure. Um, once you run out of those family and friends that everybody yeah, starts right? with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Give me the emails. Mom, Dad, give me everything right. you got. Hit them all. Um, I, I just, I think, you know, just constantly trying new things because everything works, nothing doesn't mm -hmm. sort of thing. So you got to do a little of this, a little of that, and then find what works best for you, not only you know, for who you are. Yeah. I think that's important. You can't sell out who you are in this business. Sure. Right. Yeah, you no. got to be real. Or, right. Or you're going to, like, you're going to burn out open houses. I never have it. I never will. Right. I didn't go and it's like, I'm going to just all just of a sudden you. love open houses. I don't do it. Right. Uh, but it might work for someone else. It does. It's like what, it, what you're no, saying. It absolutely does. And I, I, I uh, get requests from real estate agents all the time. Hey, I'm holding this house open. Do you have anybody? I'll throw it out to the branch who wants to. Somebody cool. will go, they'll pick up a lead and we'll get a loan. Yeah, it's just not my style. Um, I will send him or her with purchase leads to go sit and call with the agent side by side because they're twiddling okay. their thumbs at the open house. So, yeah, so what are you doing? So you're, you're saying you're bringing some purchase leads for one of your guys to go sit at the open house. Where, so where are you guys getting getting leads right now? Um, are, you, are you guys buying some? Is there a consumer or like how's that working in your in your world? Uh, previously, I was doing I was buying purchase leads. Um, from a few online sources, um, as as my own origination ramped up and I got better yeah. and better, I no longer needed that to generate my business, but I kept doing it for my LOs. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. To get them off to a good running start, um, and you know now I'm just pretty much real to referral on my purchases. Okay, and to the point where I'm so busy with those, they're now getting those from me as well. Okay, my LOs, 
and I think we all know that's about as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah. You know, the realtors kind of soften them up, build that trust already, and then when you're the one person that gets referred for this next piece of the puzzle, you know, there's really not a whole lot of closing and salesmanship as you would from like, yeah. an internet lead. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's very tough nowadays, and you would know better than me if you have some new LOs coming on, and in the past it was get a list of realtors, go to open houses, or just start cold calling them, right? Mm-hmm. Like those days are are over, you would say, for the most part, right? Sure. I mean, you still want to – you have to engage in a different way to get in front of them, right? Right. So having those purchase leads or like you're doing and helping out your team, that's just a nice soft landing. Yeah. Is that the way it should Absolutely. be done? It's supplemental stuff. You know, I'm doing direct mail right now, getting them some. Yeah, re- how's that refi- working? Refi is coming in. Okay. So we're trying to kind of just build from all over the place. You know, we have the purchase leads, my realtor referral purchase leads. Yeah, yeah. The inbound calls, doing some VA Earls. Okay. Statewide. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's just kind of a mixture of that. And yeah. And then, you know... Uh, because we're all busy right now. It's just coming at you I right still, now. I, you know, and I still stay in front of a database of 3,000 agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that I'll email blast two to three times a week about a new product. Oh, FHA spot condo. Mm-hmm. You know, that just came out. You know, you get spot condo approvals. Okay. FHA has a last. What are you guys using, like, as a CRM? Could you dive kind of deep into some of your systems and, uh, and how it works? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I use a system called Big Purple Dot. Or yeah. BPD, yeah. I call it. Um, and I built it out myself. I think they probably have some better content pre-built yeah. now than when I got started. You know, it took me a while, but, uh, but no, you're a dude that likes your own original content I too, like right? It. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. It's work. I, but I mean, when I, when I looked at theirs, I was like, nah, I'm going to make my own. Yeah. It wasn't you. Yeah. Some cheesy stuff, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. It was <laughs> probably still cheesy. Yeah. You know? Uh, cheesy 2.0 now, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but it's consistent. You're using this pretty consistent, uh, consistently. You know, you live and die out. by it. Yeah. You really should. If you're going to pay the money, and it's not expensive, but if you're going to say you're going to use it and, you know, uh, make that a part of your business and it, your P&L and your expenses, yeah. you know, you better use it. And i give you a fantastic example is um, one of my LOs. His name's Tim Palm. What up, Tim? Um, he started working for me. Last summer, as an LOA, had never closed a loan in his whole life. Okay. Had worked on the backside, underwriting, some other mortgage experience, never as an originator. Got it. Had, had this NMLS license and didn't know what to do with it sure. kind of thing. I got him started on that. He's, he was my LOA for over a year. Okay. He didn't know any better, never had bad habits, no nothing. And I told him, you run absolutely everything through that. Your phone calls, your text messages, your updates, all your alarms, everything everything he he uses it still to this day he went out on his own last month his first month all on his own five units 1.6 million nice in his first month on his own and he will tell you there's no way i could do my job without bpd okay everything's in there. everything is run through it any notes notes, yeah the notes that's important reminders and we update our real estate partners right through it okay so there's a there's a way that you can do it where you make your own note you click a button and it sends an email to your referral partner on yeah, that yeah, deal. Yeah. Exactly what you just typed. So automation's it, it, crucial because you, you it's speed and efficiency you nowadays. Need it. You right? need it. Yeah, and I I have campaigns that automatically do texting, emailing for every stage of the loan process cool. that goes out to folks. So as it's running its course, I'm updating just BPD with a click of a right. button, and then it gives them an update. And not that we don't want to pick up the phone and communicate no, but, with folks, but they're busy too. And more than half of them are just del- elated getting text updates rather want. than a phone call at work and having to step outside. Right. You know? All right. So let's put this in perspective quick. So how long do you think it took you to set that up? BPD? Yeah. Um, I want to put it in perspective. Man how hours. Long, yeah, man hours, but then how much time that's probably saved you. Oh. So it's like do the work first to save sure, in the long run, sure. right? And I jumped into it because it was the system I used at Supreme Lending. And when I quit there and came to Nexa, Nexa was using Be In Touch. Okay. And I've used Be In Touch. I like them both. But, excuse me, recently coming using BPD, I was like, I'm still going to use this. And then I had to build it out on the fly. Yeah. Because I came in like gangbusters. Like, I need to do all these loans. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I guess I would say to put a man hour number on it, you know, maybe it took. Yeah, it's tough to say, but. 15 hours. Yeah, but you know? 15 hours to save. Oh, man. I mean, I, I couldn't even put a number on how much. I mean, would you saves. be screwed right now if you had nothing in place? Absolutely. You'd just be all over the place. You'd be all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, and things fall through the cracks so easily in this business and it's highly competitive. You know what I mean? If you're not on top of it, mm -hmm. you know, you're kissing goodbye a fair amount of your, yeah. a huge percentage. So income. Carmen got got on you to do that? Like, <laughs> yo, we need more time in our life. Get this going or <laughs> right, beating right. your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? um, all right, cool. Yeah. So, that, so that's It's that's a good. time saver and mm -hmm. a money maker. Yeah, I'm really seeing like. Efficient. I'm seeing like a personalized automation is what you need. Like, because people see some of the automation, and it could be, like you said, cheesy, cheesy 2.0. Yeah. And they're not relating to that, but they still want some sort of automation. Right. Like, are you doing anything on the, uh, like, if you get a, a new client, let's, let's take it back there. Let's say you get a brand new client, mm -hmm. right? What's the first thing that you do? Um, I pick a new lead. Gets yeah, let, let's go through the process of sure. new lead to close. Okay. I want to know that process. Sure, new lead. Um, let's assume it's a purchase. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'll stick on purchase. Uh, let's assume it's a purchase because that needs to be everybody's bread and butter. Yeah. It really does. Um, get it from a, a partner one way or the right. other. Um, I'm initially going to call instantly. Okay. Okay. And then as the phone is ringing, I'm likely entering it into BPD. Right. I'm expecting to get a voicemail. Mm -hmm. And the moment I do, I leave a message. Okay. Um, by that time, probably... The fields are all in in my CRM. You're doing it right away. I'm doing it CRM instant. is so important. No, you That's can't. what you're, you're going to forget. You're going to forget. <laughs> you're going right. to forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna phone, this phone's going to ring again. Yep. Um, saving that contact, then I'm instantly changing their status to realtor referral. Okay. Which in then one minute sends them an email and a text message saying the exact same thing I said on my voicemail. Oh. Hey, this is Brett. You referred to me. Your real estate agent asked me to reach out to you, help you get pre-qualified. What's a good time today or tomorrow to talk? So you're hitting them text call three email three, three mediums every single time you try to reach someone okay cool that's and you're tracking do. where everything came from too that's important yeah okay yeah yeah absolutely where it came from was it you know uh internet lead was wherever it, it was yeah all right absolutely. cool yeah so source lead source so, lead source sure. so your your initial contact now they contacted you back mm -hmm. right what's the next step there well use an online or verbal I'm, I'm old school. I do I do handwritten 1003s. Okay, hand cool. Handwritten, not a full 1003 necessarily, but a handwritten yeah. mini app um, to get me to credit. Okay. You know, my my objective on that call, whether it's the first call, call back, the third call, whatever it is, is to tell them it's going to take five minutes and get their social security number. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. You know, I need to know who I'm dealing with as far as are you, are you a player today? Are you a player yeah. in six months? Are you a long-term one, two-year player? And sometimes yeah. that client doesn't want to give too much on the initial call anyway. They just want to kind of – they don't get it yet. So you're right. kind of buttering them up, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and it depends what lead lead source it comes from. Like yeah. I said, the realtor referral. That depends, You're right. going to roll right into the, the smoothness. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you get them on the phone, they're cooperating for the most part. Right? Are you meeting any clients right now? No. Yeah. No. No. Um, I mean, I haven't met many clients in the last three years. Yeah, I haven't. If Either. we if we need to, we have them jump on our, our uh, Zoom channel. Okay. And just hey, if they need, if they want to do that face to face, some older folks like that mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Um, or if they're uh, clear clear across town, which is like an hour away. Yeah. Um, jump on nextmortgage.com, click our support tab. I have my own Arrowhead Branch room. Oh, cool. Room, okay. And then we can do the face to face, and I can do that. Um, but yeah, taking the quick little mini app. Are some of your guys doing using like an online app? Uh, yeah, we all use Blink. You all use Blink. Okay, yeah. so Blink you're using, but you're you're old school right now. You it's like in my, it's in my email. Signature. I wouldn't change it up. Yeah, unless someone requests that, I'm taking it. I'm okay. taking it by phone. Okay, and that's like, funny because I'm like the opposite. I'm like, yo, fill this out. <laughs> We're not speaking till you fill it out. Right. But then I'm always, however, if you want to talk first, we can do that. Right. Most right. people are filling it out, but sure. everyone has different styles. Is what we're trying sure. to say. Sure. I tried that after getting back in, and I probably wasn't doing it right. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make it super, super automated where I'd never had talked to anybody. But then it gets and too it, automated, it, and you and lose then, the touch. Right, and then, it, it, yeah, I found that my percentages weren't the way they would have been, so I just reverted back to what it okay. always worked best for me. Cool, okay. So, you know, to everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I'm sure. All right, so you got you got their information now. Now it's a pre-qual or pre-approval stage, right? Mm -hmm. So where are you at there? 
Who are you communicating with? What type of game plan are you giving them before they find a house? Oh, okay. So I've collected their docs, yep. pre qualified because um, I collect everything up front. I don't know how it is here, but that's very frowned upon in Phoenix if you don't collect. Now nah, you ha- you have to. I think that's all across the country. What I'm what okay. I'm seeing right now. You got it right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so then, yeah. I mean, I just uh, share the pre qual with their agent. Give them any tips as far as okay. hey, I need this in concessions. I need that, you know. So we have a very good game plan. Mm-hmm. And then what I've always found, and it's the s- simplest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> takes five minutes what i found sets me apart um and i recommend every single one of everybody out there does this yeah half of you guys listening won't (laughs) yeah probably not right Uh, not gonna take action is so do it yeah right go is (laughs) when you tell your realtor partner when they send the offer copy me on it i'm going to call the listing agent within five minutes of that going out introduce myself Talk to them how thorough I've been in my prequal, yep. how badass our buyer is, mm-hmm. and you would not uh, imagine the reactions I get from the listing agents. Oh my God, it's so glad. Yeah, thank I'm you so for calling. So glad that you called. I never hear from the lender, mm-hmm. and it makes me feel really good. I'm going to tell my seller I talked to you, and in a multiple offer. Oh yeah. Scenario. I mean, that puts us. You're putting. You're up, getting to the top. Up and above. Yeah. So. Um, it's just a good practice I've, I've done pretty much since getting back into this business three years ago, and it consistently works day in and day out. Right. So. Yeah, because we're more than just mortgage guys, right? We're like, we're advisors. We're, we're using leverage that we might have to help everyone involved in the transaction, right? That's what I'm trying to get across. Yeah. We're not just order takers, like, here's your prequal. <laughs> let me know when the next thing happens. No, you're going the extra step, um, helping that the, the consumer hopefully get the offer accepted sure. but then you're also meeting another realtor too right right we're, we're setting the table for that for call. hey we're already yeah. approved in underwriting it's been only five days or whatever it is and that could be another referral partner for you that's too like exactly why not pick up the doing. phone yeah that's exactly. five minutes it takes right okay um and then throughout that process you know i've got the, the automation working it's checking in with the client hey how's the home search going if i haven't yeah. gotten a contract in like 10 days the first one goes out Okay. Once I issue the prequal, okay. and at different intervals, they're getting messages from me, not only to stay top of mind. Yeah, of course. Because, you know, they're getting trigger lead calls and things oh, like that, I'm right. sure, from other lenders. Yeah. So you want to stay in front of them. Um, and then also, you know, just touch and base. Really, you know, hey, how is the realtor partner working out for you? Because sometimes mm-hmm. they're not a good fit. And right. they go, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with so-and-so. You right. You know, and... And maybe you could coach them or, right. well, God forbid, I, you no, have I to get them to bring, some else. I try to bring them back together and go, hey, listen, yeah. you know, let's all get to the finish line on this one. I don't want to have to help them find another realtor or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I like that, right. You know, um, And then it, you know, it endears you to your, mm-hmm. lend, to your referral partner going, hey, yeah, it probably would have been pretty easy for him. He does business with 60 agents. Yeah. He could have easily just said, hey, you know, take this one. That kind but, of cements comes, the relationship a bit more. comes back to me, hey, I wanted you to know this is going sideways. Yeah, and you know, if you're not liking them, that's one thing. Maybe it is best to part ways. But right, you know, when you're telling me things are going great, and clients over here going, yeah, uh, yeah, some something different, we got to fix it. I think that's missing in this industry. For, uh, from what I've seen, there's not as much transparency. There has to be more, right? There has to be some honest talks, right? Because once you kind of get through that, it, it it makes a better relationship for everyone, right? Because that's what everyone wants a good, solid transaction in the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. no doubt. Now, so so we're getting through here, right? Now they're under contract, let's say. Where is it going there? Are you are you locking? Are you disclosing? What's the next step in your in your process? So Does it go to a processor? It goes to a processor. Yeah, how's that work? Yeah, I do not self process. Oh. I don't want that Mm-mm. that duty, that headache. Yeah, you got too uh, much going no, on. You just got right. four LOs yeah. last week. <laughs> no, no, never have and never will. Yeah. Uh, bless your heart, gals. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um so, yeah, pushing the file, you know, if I need an updated pay stub here, you know, if something expires, yeah. but then everything, the basic financials, the contract, um, updating LOS, whatever it is, pushing the file, you know, within 24 hours at the most okay, into a processor um, and then letting them run with it, disclosing. Um, I, I don't lock that much up front. Um, I typically kind of wait to see the appraisals come in. Yeah. 
Um, cause we're in one of those markets where sometimes they're coming in low. Yeah. How's the market right now out there? You're seeing some lower appraisals or I you mean, seeing the market flatten? It's, out there? I think it's flattening a little bit, Okay, but it had been appreciating quite rapidly. And mm-hmm. that's where, you know, the comps sometimes just don't catch up to what somebody's willing to pay. Yeah. So, I mean, nothing horrible, maybe, uh, 10% of appraisals or something coming yeah, in. Yeah. I mean, that's you know. kind of everywhere. Yeah. Especially I don't now. Think it was out of the norm or anything, you okay. know, and they're going to be you know a couple grand short to like maybe worst case 15 short or you know something yeah. like that yeah, my yeah. price points so, so you're waiting to kind of lock you know you're watching the markets yeah right? well, I, yeah certainly uh you know lock on a dip you know what uh, usually mondays and fridays yeah. suck yeah right <laughs> yeah never lock on a friday right yeah. that's that's the rule are you yeah. using anything to watch the markets like an mbs highway or a mortgage coach or i don't or just kind of yeah I, I don't and i know i should get mbs highway and i'm actually gonna be on a, a demo that that Barry Habib's doing yeah, Barry's the man. Shout yeah. out to Barry. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. I, I mean, I use that MBS Highway. Yeah, and you love it. there's so many tools in there. Um, it, I mean, not a pitch for for Barry here, but I use it. There's a lot of different tools in there besides just watching the markets. I sure. have it up on my laptop constantly just to see where it's going. Because right. I'm like you, I kind of, you know, wait. I watch it to get our clients the best deal possible. Right. You know, within 30 days is when I look to kind of lock. Sure. I don't know if you're like that or. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely within 30 days. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, we're doing pretty quick turnarounds. Well, that's the other so. thing in our world, right? Everything's quicker than I've ever seen. Right. Um, yeah, what, what lenders are you using for the most part? Um, I really love working with UWM, of course. Yeah, you know, of course. They're, they're kind of a cut above. Uh-huh. Um, so that's my first go-to, of course. Yeah, that's ours. Like, you know. if UWM uh, can't do it, then we have to go, you know, go sure. somewhere else. I, I look at them in caliber pretty closely. Okay. Um, you know, caliber's turn time slowed down there a bit because mm-hmm. their, their pricing was even beating UWM's for yeah. a while. And they yeah. got so many deals in. Um, and then so the I, refis hit and it right. just clogged yeah. everything. Everyone. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. everybody. Nobody mm-hmm. was exempt from that. Sure. But uh, I think it hit them a little bit harder. Um, so I veered away from them a little bit more recently, but I love them. Um, I like what they're about. I like the product line yeah. and the pricing. Um, we've got a great AE. Nothing bad to say about them at all. Yeah. So just don't send them a refi. Right. But that's why we're <laughs> brokers, right? Sure. You know, we can have that's, choices. That's, we have more control. I, I try to explain that to uh, some of my LOs sometimes. They go, well, this place is running this. I go, well, think about if you work just there. Exactly. <laughs> How terrible right? that would be. And that's where we all came from. Like, what if that happened at Supreme Lending? What if that happened, you know, mm-hmm. um, wherever? And I'm not picking on Supreme. No, not at all. Um, that's just where I came from. Um. You're just stuck. You're just you know, stuck. this way, hey, if, if my A lender is running like that, well, I've got B, C, and they're not like that you're falling off anymore. Right. They're just, hey, not quite not quite as fast. Right. Or not quite priced so good. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's an absolute relevant option. Yeah, I think I think there's a, a still a miscommunication of uh, broker. I mean, it's almost a dirty word still. <laughs> but, it, right? Um, that's example. why I like yeah, independent mortgage experts. But we actually have more control than that a captive type sure. lender. But right. the misconception is we have no control because we're brokering. You get a loan, you just throw it to this lender and see what happens. I'm we actually give have you more. An example. Yeah, I want to hear this. And it's actually a loan uh, I got clear to close yesterday on. All right, cool. And it, that's 10 days early. But uh, to talk about the dirty word, the broker stuff, yeah. is I got a contract from a realtor, personal loan purchase, VA. And he goes, I usually send my stuff to movement. I really like blah, 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 this or that. And right. he, I, he's like, but I know your rates are better, blah, 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 and this is my own loan. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, But then he was still very apprehensive throughout the whole process. Um, so I got the loan in. He still sent it to movement. Just so you know. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Well. I got you. And then we got an approval in like 24 hours. My processor sends out on a Monday morning, sends out the conditional Is this approval. UWM? It is UWM. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, super fast, clean approval. Yep. Um, email and phone call, for the record, from the underwriter directly to me to yep. thank me about how clean my file mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. and to personally tell me it was conditionally approved. For those that think we don't uh, have control. Yeah, or exactly. We can't even talk to people at, mm-hmm. these, at these lenders. Um, but then I, I, he was lagging on getting me the, the conditions in. And I go, hey, Tom, what's going on? Right. And 
He goes, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just really apprehensive about this whole broker thing. He, he actually had been a broker in the past before he was a realtor, but it's been a long time. Right. And he goes, I just like how movement does the upfront underwrite. And he goes, oh, do you mean like a TBD underwrite? Because I can do that too. He goes, yeah. no. He goes, no. Like when I did my, I do my disclosures, it goes to an underwriter and then I get an approval. I go, that's what you just got. That's Monday. what we just did. Right. I go, dude, we just got you that Monday. He goes, oh, that wasn't like your processor just looked over the file? No. I go, no, that was direct from an underwriter. Um, so even being in the business that closely related as a real estate yeah. agent in my local market, he still had that misconception that when we told him he was approved, that he an, wasn't a really. true underwriter hadn't even looked at the file. He thought it was just another pre-approval process or yeah, something. Here yeah. it is, blah, it, blah, blah. It, it, it puzzled me. To now, you were in the industry, obviously, <laughs> way before 2008, like we talked yes. about. What are the differences you've seen between brokering then and now? Has there been, I mean, obviously, the whole industry has changed. Sure. Uh, but what, what's changed there? Because broker has a dirty word still. Right. I is guess there that's a reason the, for it, that's maybe? That's the biggest thing to me is, you know, some of the brainwashing that's kind of been thrown out there from our retail friends. Okay. Um, that broker is bad. Um, and it certainly isn't. I mean, I think we're proven on a daily basis yeah. that brokers are better. I mean, results don't lie, right? Right. Brokers I mean, are better. I mean, it used to be that we couldn't close on time. Now we're, we're going CTC in two weeks and under. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so anything that kind of thrown out there, we're disproving. But it just takes time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It takes conversations with the Toms. Yeah. And even having to show them right. flat out. Dude, you got to just put your trust in me on this one. Mm -hmm. we're, you know, and now we're talking about moving up his closing date. Um, how cool is that? And then, then you can speak to the listing agent and, you know, they can tell their seller, yo, we can move it up. We're in a great spot. I mean, it's such an emotional process sure. for people. Yeah. That Sellers having get their money quicker. Yeah. <laughs> and they're done. That. They might have to buy another house. It just put puts everyone at ease right. in an industry that's been so chaotic for so long. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got to bring some order to it. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. Yeah. Yeah. So anything that we can tie down and, you know, have you know, flow nicely and yeah. put folks at ease and say, you know, just got to put a little trust in me and I'm going to deliver yeah, yeah, and yeah. make that happen. But it takes one at a time. Yeah. I mean, that's how it's always been. But sure. maybe with the AIM movement, broker, I mean, that's what this is about to try and push out there. But us as loan officers, branch managers, broker owners, we still got to take each file one at a time. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. That's the only way to get trust. No, no file gets treated any different. Right. You know, um, you know, whether it's, a realtor referral yeah. or a family, whatever. Right, right. And loan size doesn't matter. You know, paycheck doesn't matter. Every right. file gets the same treatment. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, we got about 10 minutes left. I'm okay. going to kind of put you on the spot here. <laughs> I know, right? I'm not the, already. Yeah, right? Don't, have we been doing this? Uh, the next, where do you see the industry as a whole in the next, let's say, three to five years? Is there any thoughts in your head? Are you looking ahead? Um, the things are changing, technology. Lending it as a whole? Yeah, the whole mortgage industry as a whole, and real estate, if you want to mix it all in. Sure. Where do you see things going? Stuff. Yeah, with everything. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, I, that stuff is certainly taking traction, especially in our market in Phoenix. Um, the I, I think is one of the biggest iBuyers on the real estate side. Okay. Um, Can you explain iBuyer? Yeah, the Zillow. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, is it Launching Pad? Jeez. Oh, yeah. So you're, that's right. Your market is big with like Zillow coming in and actually acting as the realtor, buying right? Homes, and buying houses. Them. Have yeah. you had any nightmares? Have you seen any nightmares Open with that yet? Open door is the biggest Open there. door? Yeah. Okay, yeah, your market's hot for that. Yeah. From what I've seen. We don't yeah. have that around here. Um, I've done a bunch of uh, purchases of... Really? Uh, of uh, open door homes. Okay. You know, where my buyer's gone and found an open door home. Um, it's not the greatest transaction. Right. You know, they have their own title company that they force you to pretty much use. Yep. And the service there is just atrocious, and everybody, but everybody knows it going in. Okay, yeah, everyone <laughs> yeah. knows. Everybody though. knows it, so um, it is what it is there. Now on the lending side, um, you know, I mean, I, I certainly see brokers continuing to grow and take more and more market share. Sure, um, and eventually, no longer being that dirty word. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because um, we we were not that. You know, O three, mm -hmm. everybody was a broker then. Uh, it was the place to be. So I think, you know, over time, you know, that'll, cycles, that'll, right? that'll come back through full force. Um, and just lending in general. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some of that um, right. automated stuff, yeah. you know. Uh, well, what do we have to do then to, as, 
I mean, I know you're in the branch manager phase, but like, you know, you've always been survival. You never know. You might have to go back, just be a loan officer. You, who knows? Right. Sure, sure, uh, sure. Yeah. Just who I knows? Mean, I think but there's what still do we something to be said for that personal touch. Yeah. hundred percent. You know? Right. Um, and just, you know, focusing on that, you know, there is certainly value in dealing with a human being yeah. and somebody that's local and knowledgeable and all yeah, that's that never going to change. People you know, I don't that. think that's ever going to be completely taken out of the equation. Cool. You know, but, uh, we, we should certainly watch it, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, be prepared for some of the things that are being thrown, thrown our way. Yeah. Got to pay attention. Know? Right. Right. Cool. Yeah, I mean, to be ignorant of it and not even talk about it or address it a little bit. Yeah. You know, it'd be kind of scary. Yeah. It's a really good point. Got to be transparent. We got to be honest with each other right now. Right? right. About what's going on in the industry. All right. So to kind of recap here, is there one or two things you just want to tell maybe your loan officers or anyone getting back into the industry or going to the broker side? Like some high level, any mindset type things you want to tell them? Because we know about this industry. It's, it's chaos. <laughs> so, so what can you do? Yeah, I mean, just stay focused. Keep grinding. Um, you're going to always have those ups and downs, you know. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, like I said, my first month at Nexa, 11, and all the new things being thrown at me, 11 units. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Then yeah. Yeah. the following <laughs> month, I was like, oh, shit. So try to stay together. consistent, stay Be focused, consistent. grind. I mean, I'm huge on time blocking. Okay. Um, because if you're looking to generate those referrals, this or that, you got to block out time to do your social media posts, got to do your email blasts, or whatever it is your your prospecting activities are. Mm -hmm. You got to block those out and do them consistently. Okay. Um, if you don't, again, you're just all over the place, yeah. and that's what I teach in my one-on-one -on -one coaching with my team is time block hey man you're lacking here and they usually are admittedly saying i'm lacking yeah sure i'm lacking where here. can i get help yeah right. what can so, i do so my part in the accountability is as you need the time block i think this is a fair amount this many times a week for the practice that you're talking about mm -hmm. everybody's business model is a little different right so that's why i stopped doing big big uh, meetings you're all one-on-one -on -one. because everybody's got different stuff and they tune me out because it doesn't apply to them and yeah. they're interested and then you know so I do a 30-minute 30, 30 branch meeting once once a week and then one-on-one -on -one coaching every two weeks for an hour. Nice. So That's awesome. All right, so, Brett, where can we find you? On social media? I mean, Google you or yeah, how Google, do we find you quick? Uh, Google me. The only other uh, higher-ranking Brett Weiss is some attorney in Maryland. So if you put <laughs> it... <laughs> bastard. Yeah, right? I know <laughs> but, a guy. I got a guy. Not, go not, <laughs> but it's not a super common name. So, yeah, just Google Brett Weiss. Cool. Uh, loan officer, real. We'll realtor. find you everywhere. I see you out I'm there, a, man. I'm out there. Uh, definitely on Facebook. Soon to be on TikTok. If my wife, nice. has, her, my wife has her way. Cool, cool. All right, man. Sweet, man. Yo, that was uh, Brett Weiss. Great to meet Next you. Next to Mortgage from Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me, man. Yeah.